Hiatal hernia. Introduction. Hernia. Hernia is the protrusion of an organ or part to other organ or part. A hernia occurs when part of an organ pushes, protrudes, through a muscular wall that holds it in place. There are different types of hernia. For example, an inguinal hernia is the most common type when part of the lower bowel protrudes through the muscle in the groin. Hiatus hernia. A hiatus hernia occurs when part of one of the organs in the abdomen protrudes through the diaphragm. Most commonly this is a part of the stomach, however, it may be other organs, such as the pancreas, spleen or the upper gut, small intestine. Definition of hiatus hernia. Hiatus hernia is the term used to describe a condition where part of the stomach pushes up into the lower chest through a weakness in the diaphragm. A hiatal hernia occurs when the upper part of the stomach pushes through an opening in the diaphragm, and up into the chest. This opening is called an esophageal hiatus or diaphragmatic hiatus. A hiatus hernia or hiatal hernia is the protrusion of the upper part of the stomach into the chest through a tear or weakness in the diaphragm. Types of hiatal hernia There are two types of hiatal hernia. Sliding hiatal hernia, the sliding type, as its name implies, occurs when the junction between the stomach and esophagus slides up through the diaphragm, esophageal hiatus, during moments of increased pressure in the abdominal cavity. Diaphragm is the muscle separating the lungs from the abdomen. When the pressure is relieved, the stomach falls back down with gravity to its normal position. Approximately 90% of all hiatal hernias are the sliding type. 2. Parasophageal hiatal hernia Paraosophageal hiatus hernia, also called a rolling hiatus hernia, is less common. In this situation, a part of the stomach pushes, protrudes, up through the hole in the diaphragm next to the oesophagus. Other organs from the abdomen can also protrude through the hole in some cases. This could be the pancreas, the spleen or the upper gut, small intestine. This is not the normal type of hiatus hernia and it is much less common than a sliding hiatus hernia. It is more risky, as there is more chance the organ protruding can get stuck, causing a blockage, obstruction. Risk Factors Hiatal hernia is most common in people who are age 50 or older, obese, pregnancy, weight lifting, causes of hiatal hernia. A hiatal hernia occurs when weakened muscle tissue allows stomach to bulge up through diaphragm. It's not always clear why this happens. But a hiatal hernia might be caused by age-related changes in diaphragm, injury to the area, for example, after trauma or certain types of surgery, being born with an unusually large hiatus, persistent and intense pressure on the surrounding muscles, such as while coughing, vomiting, straining during a bowel movement, exercising or lifting heavy objects. Clinical Manifestation Most small hiatal hernias cause no signs or symptoms. But larger hiatal hernias can cause heartburn, regurgitation of food or liquids into the mouth, backflow of stomach acid into the esophagus, acid reflux, difficulty swallowing, chest or abdominal pain, shortness of breath, Wanting of blood or passing of black stools, which may indicate gastrointestinal bleeding. Diagnosis. History taking. Physical examination. The client is examined in a supine or standing position. A bulge may be seen or felt when the client coughs or bears down. Upper endoscopy. The upper endoscopy, also known as esophagogastroduodenoscopy or EGD, allows the doctor to examine the inside of the patient's esophagus stomach, and duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, with an instrument called an endoscope. Barium X-ray of upper digestive system, X-rays are taken after client drink a chalky liquid that coats and fills the inside lining of the digestive tract. The coating allows the doctor to see a silhouette of esophagus, stomach and upper intestine. Esophageal manometry, this test measures the rhythmic muscle contractions in client, esophagus when he swallow. Esophageal manometry also measures the coordination and force exerted by the muscles of esophagus. Management. Medications. 
If client experience heartburn and acid reflux, physician may recommend antacids that neutralize stomach acid. Antacids, such as Mylanta, Rolades and Tums, may provide quick relief. Overuse of some antacids can cause side effects, such as diarrhea or sometimes kidney problems. Medications to reduce acid production. These medications, known as H2 receptor blockers, include chimetidine, tagamet, famotidine, pepsid, and nizetidine, acid. Stronger versions are available by prescription. Medications that block acid production and heal the esophagus. These medications, known as proton pump inhibitors, are stronger acid blockers than H2 receptor blockers and allow time for damaged esophageal tissue to heal. Over-the-counter proton pump inhibitors include lansoprazole, Prevacid 24HR, and omprazole, Prilosic, Zedrid. Surgical Procedure Gastropexy to fix the stomach in position is indicated if symptoms are severe. Nissane fund application. In fund application, the gastric fundus, upper part, of the stomach is wrapped, or placated, around the inferior part of the esophagus, preventing herniation of the stomach through the hiatus in the diaphragm and the reflux of gastric acid. Nursing diagnosis and interventions. Nursing diagnosis. Imbalanced nutrition less than body requirements acute pain risk for aspiration deficient knowledge anxiety nursing interventions one advised the patient about preventing reflux of gastric contents into esophagus by eating smaller meals to reduce stomach bulk avoiding stimulation of gastric secretions by omitting caffeine and alcohol which may intensify symptoms refraining from smoking which stimulates gastric acid secretions. Avoiding fatty foods, which promote reflux and delay gastric emptying. Refraining from lying down for at least one hour after meals. Losing weight, if obese. Avoiding bending from the waist or wearing tight-fitting clothes. To advise the patient to report healthcare facility immediately at onset of acute chest pain may indicate incarceration of parasophageal hernia. 3. Reassure patient that he or she is not having a heart attack, but all instances of chest pain should be taken seriously and reported to the patient's healthcare provider. Complications Dysphagia Esophagitis Gastroesophageal reflex Infection or bleeding Damage of the internal organ e.g. heart, lungs etc. Heartburn So guys, thanks for watching my video. You can like and comment on my video but don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel to watch quality content like this. Thank you guys.